All right, and we are back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. And for the fourth part of the show, we will now get into talking about the 49ers and their win over the Patriots, defeating the Patriots 30-13, to but they got back on track. Last couple games, you know, against the, the Vikings, they lose that game. Vikings played really well against them. And then against the Rams, that was a game they should have had, but they ended up choking away that lead and losing... But here, I mean, the Patriots, this was a game that they definitely should win. And that's what they did. They went out and they dominated this game from start to finish. You know, the Patriots really couldn't get anything going offensively. Uh, the 49ers defense, actually, despite that, actually, no, I'm looking at the, well, I'm looking at the Patriots stats. They got to Jacoby Brissett six times. They got to him six times. So it was a rough day for him. He went 19 to 32 for 168 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Patriots only ran the ball for 73 yards. Ramondre Stevenson had 13 carries for 43 yards. Antonio Gibson actually ended up being their leading receiver. He had three receptions for 67 yards. Uh, Austin Hooper had a receiving touchdown in this game. He had two receptions for 13 yards. Uh, three fumbles by Jacoby Brissett in this game. Did only lose one. Um, the Niners did fumble in this game, and, and Christian... Uh, Elise uh, recovered it. Rondre Stevenson also fumbled in this game. That's back-to-back weeks of fumbles for them. They did get to Brock Purdy once. Uh, Dietrich Wise uh, Jr. got to Purdy. But, yeah, it was not a good day for the Patriots. Brock Purdy, decent numbers, 15-27, 288 yards, one touchdown, one interception. That was in the end zone. Jordan Mason continues to run the football well, 24 carries, 123 yards. And one touchdown. Juwan Jennings was their leading receiver. Three receptions for 88 yards. Debo Samuel at three for 58. Brandon Ayuk, two for 48. George Kittle, four for 45. And a touchdown. So it was good that Brock Purdy had most of his weapons back uh, after missing both Kittle and Ayuk, or Kittle and Debo last week. But like I said, six sacks to Jacoby Brissett. Jake Moody went three for three on field goals. And to go through the specifics... Patriots got the ball to start the game, didn't do anything with it. The Niners went 15 plays, 90 yards down the field. Jake Moody kicked a 22-yard field goal. Then on the Patriots' next drive, the first first play of their next possession, Ron J. Stevenson fumbled. Patriots turned that into, or 49ers turned that into a field goal, 26-yard field goal by Jake Moody. Then Jacoby Brissett threw a pick to Fred Warner, and it was returned 45 yards to the house, so that made it 13-0. Patriots then turned it over on downs in their next possession. Niners scored a touchdown. That was the George Kittle touchdown from 12 yards out. I mean, he basically mossed three Patriots players on this uh, touchdown. So it was 20 to nothing, and then it was 20 to three at the half. However, the Patriots did open up the second half, scoring a touchdown. Five plays, 27 yards. Jacoby Brissett on fourth and one connected with Austin Hooper for a five-yard touchdown. But then the Niners did answer with another touchdown, Jordan Mason from four yards out to make it 27-10. to More punts. Patriots did kick a field goal later in the game. Uh, Joey Sly from 54 yards out made it 27-13. Brock Purdy threw a pick in the red zone. Um, and it was set up by a 45-yard pass play to Juwan Jennings. But yeah, that was a, not a good play by Purdy. Patriots turned it over on downs. Niners kicked another field goal. Moody from 41 yards out. Continues his good season. Patriots then fumbled. That was all she wrote. Niners get back to 2-2. Two and two, And the Patriots drop to 1-3. and three. The Niners, they take on next week. They take on the Cardinals. For the Patriots, they take on the Dolphins. A team that is just reeling right now with the quarterback issues that they have at the moment. But, you know, the Niners, look, they're another team that, you know, they've gotten off to a slow start. I'm not really worried about them. At some point, Christian McCaffrey, it seems like Christian McCaffrey is going to come back at some point. But you know what? I feel like the Niners are going to be okay because Jordan Mason has done a great job running the football. Uh, I, I believe he does lead the NFL in rushing. He has played really well, and I think that's going to continue. Now, obviously, Christian McCaffrey brings more to the table when it comes to catching passes out of the backfield. But Jordan Mason is a big guy, and he can bulldoze over people. You know, he's done a nice job, and I think that's going to continue. And you got Debo Samuel back. You got George Kittle back. You hope to get Brandon Ayuk going. You hope to get all these guys going. Jawan Jennings looks like the best player right now uh, out of the pass catchers. 
uh, with what he's been able to do, you know, picking up where he left off in the Super Bowl because, you know, could have won Super Bowl MVP if the, had the Niners won that game. Um, I think they're going to be okay. The biggest thing is protect Brock Purdy because you saw, you know, at least you give him protection. You know, you saw against the Rams, a team that I know is banged up, but, you know, Brock Purdy was missing a lot of his weapons. Purdy played well. And, you know, again, he wasn't spectacular on Sunday by any means. And, you know, the Patriots' defense is still respectable. But the Niners still won. And, you know, keep this momentum going. Like I said, eventually Christian McCaffrey is going to come back, and then this team will kick into that second gear, if he's healthy, of course. Um, But can the 49ers go far in the playoffs without Christian McCaffrey? Once again, the biggest thing for me is the defense. The defense has to play better. And it had a good game on Sunday. I know it was against a very inferior, it was a much inferior opponent. We understand that. But, you know, against some of these better teams that they're going to be facing on their schedule, they got the Bills on their schedule, they got the Packers, they got the Lions later in the season. Um, you know, they still haven't played the Seahawks yet. Seahawks, I think, are going to give them a tough time. Defense is going to have to step up and, you know, be that defense that, you know, we're accustomed to seeing. And you still got guys banged up on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, again, who knows when Dre Greenlaw is coming back. But, um, you know, as long as you got Nick Bosa, you got Fred Warner, you know, they'll be okay. But, you know, again, I still have my concerns with them. But it's not enough where I think the Niners are just going to be, you know, out of it. Um they are gonna. They're gonna be a team that makes the playoffs. I. I think they're gonna get things right. And you know now they're one game back of the Seahawks for the division lead. They're gonna figure it out. So I, I just looked up. You know Dre Greenlaw. Kyle Shanahan a week ago said there's no timetable for Dre Greenlaw's return. And he's a huge player on that defense. So you're hoping maybe they get him back mid-season. Maybe after that. But it's just unfortunate he suffered that kind of injury in the Super Bowl. You know, and that's the very last game of the year. So, you know, now because he got hurt that late, he's going to be coming back late. So, we'll see. But, you know, 49ers, they get back on track. They take on the Cardinals, a team that's kind of reeling these last couple weeks. But it is a divisional game. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. You know, Cardinals... uh can put up a lot of points against the Niners. They've done that. Last year they did. But the Niners, you know, put up a lot of points on the Cardinals' defense. So, um, we'll see what happens. Right now the Niners are a 7.5-point favorite. So, we'll see how it goes. And then for the Patriots, I mean, I, I think that game against the Dolphins is very winnable. It's at home. Play good defense. You know, I, I think the Patriots could win that game. But you just feel bad for Jacoby Brissett. That they're basically, and I get it because, you know, you don't want to put Drake May behind that offensive line, but, you know, somebody's got to play behind it. And you just feel bad for Jacoby Brissett because he had to deal with it back to back weeks against the Jets and now against the Niners. Two good defensive lines. And, you know, he's just got to be back there, but he's going to get hurt. And then you're going to have to put in Drake May, unless you want to put in Joe Milton and make him, you know, start. But, yeah, I I just don't don't like seeing that. But, again, someone's got to be back there. You know, you can't be doing direct snaps the whole game, do wildcat formations. Somebody's got to play quarterback, and right now it's Jacoby Brissett. And they're going to have him start for as long as possible. And then at some point, we will see Drake May. I mean, we did see him a little bit against the Jets. Didn't see him in this game. But at some point, I would imagine he does start. Or maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't start at all this year. But we'll have to wait and see on that. But let me know what you guys think about this win for the Niners. What were your takeaways from this game? I mean, again, this was a game that they should win and that's what happened they took care of business and now you go up against a divisional opponent that's kind of 
you know, struggling these last couple weeks offensively. So we'll see how it goes. But let me know uh, what you guys think about this game in the comments. So when we come back from our final break of the show, we'll get into my power rankings for this week, my top five. It's definitely different. Definitely different. And it's going to change. From week to week, it is going to change. And, again, I do top five because it's easier. And you guys know me. Not a not a big fan of doing rankings. But, you know, at least top five is more manageable. Top ten, you know, it's kind of pushing it a little bit. And it, this week it was hard. It, it was definitely hard uh, to come up with the top five. Because, like I said... Definitely has changed from last week based off of how this past weekend went, how some of the games went. But that's just how it is. It's just a week to week thing. This year, it's really week to week. You really just have no idea. But that's kind of where we're at right now. And I think as we progress through the season, you know, you're really going to get more of an understanding of where some of these teams are at. Because, you know, you have teams that will have a good week and then, you know, then they'll struggle. You know, I mean, there's some teams that, you know, consistently they're playing well. And you kind of know what to expect out of them, even though it is still early. But there's some teams I do have confidence in moving forward. Um, and we'll get into all that, like I said, when we come back from our final break of the show. We've already made it to the end. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, these shows... Shows always fly, and once again, that is the case here. So, um, yeah, so we'll talk about my power rankings after week four, give you my top five, and that will basically put a bow on the show for today. So, for one final time today, stick around, and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. 